what are you doing here? Oh, that's right. You're expecting a review. Huh. Let me think. I've got just the thing. Let's talk about the Del 10 French small sword. The small sword, also known as a dress sword and a court sword, is a small single handed weapon which developed in the 17th and 18th century out of the rapier. This sword was primarily used as a thrusting weapon and the martial line of small sword combat eventually gave rise to what we know as modern fencing. Small swords took many different forms with a variety of blade shapes and hilt shapes. While the small sword was commonly used for dueling, it was also used as a dress sword for military officers. Swords like this had been seen in events such as the American Revolutionary War. The Del 10 small sword is based on a late 18th century design and features a thin diamond cross section blade. The guard and pommel are solid brass while the grip is wood with a steel wire wrap. The unsharpened blade is made of a well tempered chrome vanadium steel with a hardness of 50 HRC and is peened at the pommel for durability. I purchased this particular small sword because it has a diamond cross section blade. Now I needed that one specifically because I have an unearthed blade that is believed to be from the Revolutionary War era and it has a diamond cross section. It's also likely that it was of French origin so finding a French version small sword with a diamond cross section was the perfect counterpiece for a display. Now that's enough about the history of what, why I needed this sword. Let's get back to the sword itself. Here are the specifications of the Del 10 French small sword. To speak about the aesthetics of a small sword, I have to give you a bit of history on well, how these things were made and also how they were viewed by society. You see, small swords were not too dissimilar from rapiers in that very often the quality of materials and how well they were constructed would seem like a direct reflection of your standing in society. So if you were rich or powerful, like you know an officer in the army, you might have a very, very nice small sword. And the way these were constructed, especially in the 18th century, was that the blades were actually mass produced in a country like France and then shipped off to a whole other, another country such as America, where there a local silversmith would cast the hilt furniture components and assemble the sword. So you would have small swords with silver and maybe even gold in the hilt components. So that being said, I kind of feel like a poor officer. I mean, it's solid brass, but it's a very, very bare and basic blade. Doesn't say a lot about my standing in society. Now, I'm not really all that turned off by it. I like simple designs, and even in something like a small sword, I like the idea that it looks very, very plain and basic, that it's actually appealing to me. And I also really like this guard here. This is what is called a boat shell guard. It's also called a heart guard by some people because, well, it looks just like a heart. Um, it is a very, very straightforward and basic design, and it works well enough for this particular sword. Oddly enough, while that was very often the focus, for my purposes, it was the blade that mattered, so I didn't care too much. Overall, it's a rather nice looking hilt. Uh, it's not going to astound anybody. It's not going to make them ooh and ah. I do actually really like the wire wrapping because of the wire design they used. I think it looks very nice. But overall, it's plain, it's basic, and it's straightforward. Now, I will note that specifically the aesthetics of the one that I have is maybe a little dinged up. You see, I actually purchased this for a good bit cheaper 
as a scratch and dent purchase off of Cult of Athena. So note that a brand new one of these will actually look a little bit less scuffed up and have less dings and dents. Now that we're going to talk about functionality, I think it's time I come clean. I know pretty much nothing about modern fencing or how to use a small sword. Nothing. See, I, I know a lot about long swords and, and things such as that because that's been my primary interest, but all the stuff that goes into that kind of martial combat or even sport combat is something that I just don't know a lot about. I know very, very basic things. Such as, I know that this is, of course, primarily a thrusting weapon. So it actually didn't bother me too much that this is actually a very blunt blade because it doesn't really matter that much you're not really using it to cut. I also know how to hold it more or less. Uh, but in the end, I couldn't tell you really how to utilize this, and I'm sure anyone who does would easily be able to beat me in a duel with a small sword. I don't even really do rapier fighting all that much, maybe in the future. Now, I will say that from a functionality standpoint, it's good steel. It's really interesting. This is a very flexible blade, but it doesn't whip at all. It's, it's extremely rigid. Very interesting because I don't really know how they achieve that because it's a very thin blade, uh, both in, in thickness but as well as width, and I don't know how they made it not whippy, which is actually really interesting because I've, I've messed with it some to see how the point control is, and it's really quite good. I, I'm very happy with the point control with this blade. Uh, I didn't do a lot of thrust tests with it because, well, it's going to pierce something and okay, uh, but overall, yeah, it works. It works as a sword. I will note that my particular sword, which mostly I'm going to use for display, is a little bit rattly in the hilt component, uh, specifically right here in the cross guard. Uh, it is not quite as aligned, and you can just barely hear it. Uh, but that's okay because, again, I'm not really planning on using this all that much. So, from a functionality standpoint, not knowing a lot about small sword combat, or really even what the most important traits are in a small sword, I can say as a general sword lover and someone who collects a lot of different types of swords, I think it's actually quite nice. I, I actually like it. I would think it would be dependable as a small sword. That said, I would be interested to see what people who are more an expert would actually say. So, if you have any thoughts on what makes a good small sword, Maybe post down in the comments and I can modify my description of this and speak to some of the other things that I don't really know what to talk about. Oh, well, that's it. Let's move on to the conclusion. I'm going to go ahead and reiterate what I said before. I purchased this specific small sword because of its blade design, specifically that has a diamond cross section. And that was because I wanted a small sword with a diamond cross section as part of a display with an unearthed blade that came from about the 18th century with a diamond cross section. This is a small sword blade and I even think that it came from France so finding this specific sword was an incredibly exciting thing. It's one of the few out there that kind of meets those criteria. But this is a very important thing for me to bring up because that is why I purchased it and that is why I was willing to purchase it. But at the price point they're asking at sometimes just over $400, I don't know that I actually normally recommend this sword for purchase. Unless you're coming from, well, where I'm coming from, where you have a very specific need for this specific type of small sword. So with all that being said, it's functional, it looks okay, it is a good sword, it's just not something that I think is worth the market price. Here it is, the Dell 10 French small sword. I give it a 3 out of 5.